So in the last lecture, we looked at distributed economic dispatch problem, and uh, that was uh, the sort of first introduction to a real, real world distributed optimization problem. So today we are going to look at a more general form of distributed optimization problem. And we are going to look at a few algorithms, uh, first order algorithm, second order algorithm for solving distributed optimization problems as well as uh, the fixed time equivalent of distributed optimization problem. So in certain text, you will also see it's called, it's referred to as a decentralized optimization problem. And when I say decentralized, it's called decentralized because all the gradient computation that is going to be decentralized, but the communication is going to be distributed in the sense that you are only going to be communicating with your neighbors and there is no centralized computation or communication happening. So, so in certain texts you would see decentralized uh, appearing instead of distributed, but uh, at the uh, core of it, they are trying to solve a similar kind of problem. And the kind of problem that we are interested in is of this form. So minimize with respect to xi, fi xi, uh, subject to x1 equal to, okay. So this is the kind of optimization problem that we are interested in. So this is, this problem is same as, uh, let's say xi is in Rn. So let me also, so we say xi is in, okay. So this is same as solving this centralized optimization problem, which is i equal one through n. So this is centralized optimization problem. And this is decentralized or distributed, uh, decentralized or distributed optimization problem. When I say distributed optimization problem, so that means, So first of all, is this clear that uh, the two optimization problems are equivalent? So minimizing the summation of fi, where x is your decision variable, is same as minimizing, minimizing the summation of fi of xi with the constraint that x1 is equal to x2 is equal to x3. So these two problems are equivalent. So equivalent formulation or these formulations are equivalent. But the reason we call it distributed optimization problem is because we are going to make certain restrictive assumptions on what is known. So, so agent i knows only its own private objective function. So what do we mean by that? So these fi's are private. So agent j must be must be having some other objective function in mind. Agent i has some other op, op, uh, optimization problem to deal with, but together they are trying to solve this cooperative or a, or a sort of a common, uh, they are, together they are trying to minimize this common objective function, right? So let's say I look at a problem of this form. Uh, so example would be fi of x given by half of x minus i whole square, okay? And if I look at this particular centralized optimization problem, i1 through n, fi of x, which is same as, let's say n is equal to 5. So there are 5 such five. Suppose this is what we are trying to minimize. So what is the objective? optimal value for this particular or what is the optimizer for this particular uh, optimization problem. So we want to minimize this. So what is x star? What are the objective functions here or f y's? Half x minus 1 whole square, half x minus 2 whole square, x minus 3, x minus 4 and x minus 5 whole square. 
So you can show the x star turns out to be 3, which is the middle of like the midpoint of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So you can in fact show that x square turns out to be 3 and as I mean simply you can set the gradient. So let's call this. Uh, so if you set this gradient to 0, 1 through a 5, gradient fi of x, if you set this to be equal to 0, so what do you get? Uh, you get x x star minus i 1 through 5, this is equal to 0. That means x basically x star is the average of 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 which happens to be 3, okay. So this is the centralized opt optimization problem. But it may happen that these may these objective functions individually are being optim or individually are being uh, held private by different agents in the network. So you can imagine a scenario for instance. You have a network like this. One, let's say three, four, and five. And for the first agent, uh, the objective function is half x minus one whole square. For the second agent, it's half x minus two whole square x minus 4 whole square right. So these so agent 1 only knows about its own private objective function which is f1. Agent 2 knows about its own private objective function which is f2 and so on right f2 f3 and so on. Now they are trying to minimize this sum of uh, this cumulative objective function right and if I mean if they want to minimize this without having to know what f fi's for other agents look like then they need to exchange cert some other cert certain information because if every agent greedily minimizes their own objective function so in this case x star x1 star turns out to be 1 x2 star turns out to be 2 x3 star would be 3 4 and 5 right so everyone's uh, belief about this global optimization problem a globe, the global optimal value is going to be different, right? Because they do not know what other agents are trying to minimize. Because agent one, like agent i is unaware of agent j's objective function. So that means they need to exchange certain information, and therefore we also need to run consensus on x i's, so that eventually every agent, not just they end up uh, minimizing a part of their own objective function, but also uh, a part of the global objective function or some their neighbors objective function and eventually they arrive at the same optimal value right. So our goal today is, is to develop algorithms for solving distributed optimization problems DOP okay. And one thing that we are going to uh, uh, I mean we are going to be agreeing with this that you need certain certain kind of information exchange between neighbors. Between neighbors to facilitate consensus on the optimum global optimizer right. That is the only way they can, so maybe agents can exchange information about x stars or maybe they can exchange information about the, their gradient for instance. So let us say agent 1 has its current estimate, so what can info, what can uh, agents exchange, or what information can agents exchange, so maybe let us say agent i can share its current estimate, current estimate x i k right, let us say the kth iteration, it can share its current estimate of what the optimal optimizer looks like or it can also exchange maybe information about So what is the current value of the gradient at its current estimate of the uh, current value of its own gradient? I mean again because it does not have information about fj's, so it can only evaluate its own gradient. So what is the current value of its own gradient evaluated at the current estimate 
X, Y, J. So maybe these are the kind of information that agent I can exchange with its neighbors. And if agent I only exchanges information about X, Y, Z, so that means we are going to be working with first order algorithms where they are going to be running consensus on X, Y, Z, and at the same time trying to minimize, uh, trying to minimize the global objective function. As we had seen in the context of Nestor's accelerated gradient and uh, heavy ball method, that sometimes you also add momentum term, which is basically dependent on the gradient of the function, right? So you use a pre information at the previous step to essentially accelerate the convergence. And in that case, in that case, you also need, I mean, the agents also need to exchange information about the gradient of Fy. So if x is n-dimensional, gradient is also n-dimensional, right? So in total, you are going to be exchanging order n dimensional information, right, which is in, in this case 2n, but I mean you are not sharing information which in uh, which is basically order n square or order n cube and so on, right, it is still order n. So this is the amount, total amount of information they will be sharing if they end up sharing both, but at least uh, this amount of information needs to be shared. Is this clear? Alright, so let us look at our first algorithm, uh, yeah. F to be f is going to be scalar, it's a function, right? X x need not be scalar. F f is a scalar. F is a function. So the first algorithm that we are going to be looking at is called descent distributed gradient descent DDD. Okay. So imagine you have a graph like this, right? So let's let's also draw this script, redraw this. So you have one. Okay. Let's say you have five agents in the network. So as we as we had seen in the context of uh, consensus, we define uh, uh, basically mixing matrix or the uh, W stochastic matrix, right? And we had used this formula that Wij is going to be 1 over 1 plus max of di dj if, if uh, basically this pair ij belongs to your edge set and i not equal to j, it is 1 minus summation j not equal to i w i j if i equal to j and it is 0 else, right? So if there are no edges then it is 0. So we had designed this w stochastic matrix, right? We had looked at this particular formula for designing w stochastic matrix and which basically comes from metropolis weighting. So we are going to be using like in that when designing the discrete time algorithm, we are going to be use, making use of this particular w i j here, right? So in this case w i j I mean, we basically will have values for edges connecting 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 2 to 3, 3 to 5 and so on, as well as self loop, self, uh, self edges, which is essentially W11, W22 because of this, okay. All right, so let us say there were no, there was no, uh, I mean everything was known, right? Like let us say the, uh, you know, like every agent knows every other agent's object, private objective function. So it is not private anymore, let us say, so then what would have been the dynamics for X? Let's say it's a centralized optimization problem. So this cent this centralized optimization problem that we are trying to solve. So what should be the dynamics of x? A simple gradient descent scheme would look like what? So you have x k plus one. So this is centralized update. Suppose every agent knows every other agent's knows all fi's right so that's that's when you are going to run a centralized update like this which is xk minus some step size eta k times gradient of f evaluated at xk where this capital f is nothing but summation i1 through n fi okay so this was this this would have been the centralized uh, dynamics so let me write this clear clean
and f capital F is basically the summation of this, right? So this would have been the update rule for update. But then in case of distributed optimization, so when you have distributed setup, certainly this is not possible, right? So we define, so every agent is going to have its first of all own copy of uh, what x would look like. So there is no common x connecting them. So agent i is going to up, update, let's, let's, say, let's say something called x i k plus half, which is going to be a simple consensus step. So j 1 through n w i j x j k. So let's say at the end of k iterations, Every, every agent has its has a value x1, k, x2, k, x3, k and so on. So, so this is called mixing step or consensus step. Mixing step or consensus step. Okay. So, this is, so at k plus 1 iteration this is what happens. So we compute the x i k plus half, let us call it an intermediate value. And then based on this, we compute an updated x i k plus 1, which is going to be a gradient descent on this, right? Minus eta k times gradient of f i is the scheme clear to everyone? So this is this this is what this particular algorithm does. So essentially, you have a consensus step or the mixing step, followed by the gradient step or gradient descent step. Okay. There are other ways to. I mean, it's it's possible that you can run the gradient descent step first, followed by the consensus, and that that would work too. So. An alternative would be simple alternative would be you define x i k plus f to be x i k minus and then you define x i k plus 1 as j 1 through n w i j x j k plus half. So that is also possible. So you can do the gradient descent step first, followed by the uh, mixing step, and this would also be fine thing to do. Is this algorithm clear to everyone? So we are running a mixing or the consensus step, followed by the gradient step, uh, and with, while we are not going to go into the proof of uh, why this uh, di distributed gradient descent, descent algorithm or the DGD algorithm works, let's try to develop some intuition as to why this would work. Okay. So let us let us try and analyze this particular algorithm. So we are going to define x bar k. So we want the average dynamics to converge to the optimal solution, right? So what is x bar k? We are going to be defining x bar k as summation i1 through n x i k. Okay? And likewise you have x bar k plus 1 defined which is going to be 1 over n summation i equal 1 through n x i k plus 1. Okay? So we are trying to understand how the average dynamics kind of behaves. Okay? This is what we are trying to do. So if I look at this particular algorithm and I combine the two steps because I know what x i k plus half looks like. So let us do that. So if I combine both steps, x i k plus half is nothing but summation j 1 through n w i j x j k right and then you have minus eta k in gradient f i and then you have x i let me write it as x i k plus half or not. Okay? Now if I try to write down this dynamics in terms of this average dynamics which is x bar k. So that means I need to add basically sum, sum it from 1 through n and take 1 over n. So this implies x bar k plus 1 is going to be 1 over n summation i 1 through n summation j 1 through n 
W I J X J K minus theta K over N summation I one through N is this clear? Now what is this quantity? So if I look at this particular quantity uh, 1 over n summation j 1 through n summation i 1 through n w i j x j k So what is this quantity? What is this equal to? So this is essentially the uh, row sum right and row sum for a doubly stochastic matrix is 1. So this is equal to 1. So that means I can write x bar k plus 1 as 1 over n summation, summation x j k right. So this becomes x bar k minus eta k over n times I equal 1 through n uh, gradient phi x i k plus half ok. So this is what we end up getting for the average dynamics. So this is average dynamics and if I look at the centralized update. So centralized update was x k plus 1 which is for the average dynamics is x k minus eta k times gradient of f of x k right capital F. We are almost in that in that uh, so we can so you can equ equivalently see that I can write this as x k plus 1 is x bar k minus eta k over n gradient of f of x x bar k plus some e k error term. Why because this is defined in terms of x i k plus half whereas the centralized update was defined in terms of in terms of a common x k right ok. So therefore where e k is e k is eta k over n gradient of f x bar k minus eta k over n summation i 1 through n gradient f i of x i k plus half ok or I can write this as eta k over n summation i equal 1 through n gradient f i x bar k minus gradient f i x i k plus half ok is this clear? So this is the as long as this error is small, so that means your uh, average dynamics is going to follow your centralized dynamics right. So if you can make the error small, so that is when the average dynamics would follow the centralized dynamics. So if we can guarantee guarantee that error e k is a small then the average dynamics follows the centralized dynamics. Centralized gradient descent. Okay. And how can we show ensure that E k is small? So if your gradient is uh, let us say the, the if, if your gradient is L Lipschitz then you can bound this in terms of the difference between x bar and right and this is this is a standard argument that is eventually used to prove that E k is going to be small. So if you assume that f is uh, let us say L, L smooth that means your gradient is L, L, uh, L Lipschitz and you can use those arguments to basically bound this and therefore you can show that this kind of uh, this kind of dis dis distributed gradient descent would actually uh, converge to the optimal solution.
optimal solution of the global objective function okay not the individual objective functions so every agent would converge to the same value same optimizer and or same value and that value happens to be the optimizer of the global objective function yeah you have to prove so usually this is done using a, so usually when you when i say eta k it's it's kind of taken to be one over k kind of learning rate so that eventually anyway you make it go to zero Hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you make eta k to be 1 over k, it will become 0, right? It will eventually go to 0 as k goes to number of iterations go to infinity. So, so then, right. But then this term may, may also be very large, right? So you want to also ensure that this term also becomes smaller along with eta k to be 1 over k. What if this term grows like, I mean, more than k? So you also have to ensure that. So using L Lipschitzness and let's say you also, I mean, if you want to expedite the rate convergence rate, then you also have to assume that f is mu strongly convex and so on. But assuming f is L smooth, uh, you can still, f, f is L smooth, you can still uh, pretty much show that this ek is going to be small. And these are the standard arguments that we had used when proving the centralized convergence of the centralized gradient descent. Using similar, very similar arguments, you can sh uh, show this as well. Okay. So typically, uh, this the learning rate that is used is for uh, these kind of approaches is eta k is like one over k. Essentially, you want robbins monroe kind of condition, saying that summation eta k k zero k essentially one to infinity. They should diverge, and summation k 1 to infinity eta k square, this should be less than infinity. So, one of the criteria being 1 over k, okay. So, this is a sufficient condition by the way. There is another algorithm. So, DGD was one of the sort of primary or the uh, algorithms. I think it was a paper by Nedich and Olszewski uh, where they showed the convergence proof of DGD. Uh, there is, I mean, therefore, then sort of more refined uh, convergence proofs particularly this algorithm called extra, which essentially shows uh, convergence with fixed learning rate. It's slightly modified version of what we have seen, but it shows convergence with this fixed learning rate. Okay. 